Hi book lovers, welcome back to my channel. September is over, which means it's wrap up time. Um, so I read a lot of books in September, about 20 books, although like four-ish of them were novellas and I also listened to a couple audiobooks. But overall it was a good reading month. I had some really good reads, um, a couple bad ones too. So this video will probably run a bit long, although my recent videos have also been long. So bear with me. But let me know how your reading month for September was, how many books you read, um, what were your favorite books of the month, anything that you think that I should read myself, uh, please let me know. But I've got my tea with me and this video is gonna run a little long, so let's just get started. So my first read of September was not very good. That was Complicate Me by M. Robinson. I've had this author on my TBR for a very long time just because um, everyone has always recommended her books whenever I asked for angsty books. But this one just did not work for me. I hated the characters, especially the hero. He was just awful. Um, I mean, maybe her other books are better, but this one was just um, sexist. The characters, especially the guys in there, were so hypocritical. The hero treated the heroine like shit. One of my biggest romance pet peeves is a hero who continues to sleep around with other women, even though he has already developed feelings with the heroine or like he's already started something with the heroine um, and this one was literally that <laughs> so it got on my nerves so much. It is a friends to lovers book so these main characters met when they were like young kids um, and they were best friends. It's a group of guy friends and then plus the heroine who is younger than everyone else. They treat her like a princess but at the same time um, they don't let her do much. Like when they start you know growing up my teenagers and their horniness gets to them they go around and sex it all up with anything and everything that moves while they pretty much tell the heroine that she can't even look at other men other boys the hero is all oh i love her so much but then he continues sleeping around with everyone the main conflict between them was that the other boys wouldn't allow lucas the hero to be with the heroine just because his reputation is that bad. He doesn't deserve her, which I agree with. Honestly, it was a pretty lame conflict. Like if he really, you know, loved her that much, he would give them a good reason and prove to them that he deserved to be with her. But no, he just kept sleeping around, having his fun, um, and hurting the heroine in the process. So he was just the worst. I hated him. He was a piece of shit. Of course the heroine has to be this pure versional kind of girl who saves herself for this piece of shit. Yes, this book was angsty. Um, it gave me the angst that I was looking for, but you know, at what cost? Uh, my sanity. So I do not recommend this one. Maybe her other books are better, um, like the hero isn't as bad. Uh, but I probably won't be reading her again anytime soon. Um, if you have any suggestions though on what books uh, that you loved from M. Robinson, let me know. Maybe I'll give them a try. My next read though is one of my absolute favorites of the month and that is Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. This is a historical romance, a debut romance too, and I freaking loved it so much. It's such good slow burn. Um, it's like a clash of the classes where the hero is a duke and the heroine is not, you know, blue-blooded. That is one of the big conflicts in this book too, just because the hero is one of the top dukes out there, like eighth in line for the throne um, in England. So he has quite the responsibility, um, not only uh, for his land, for like his estates and the people who work for him, but to also marry well and not marry someone who is not titled, which the heroine is not. This book is filled with such good tension, so much chemistry between um, Annabelle and Montgomery. Montgomery is on my Grumpy Heroes list. If you haven't watched um, that video, go check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below. The heroine is part of the feminist movement in Oxford, uh, kind of reluctantly, but she kind of has to um, as part of her Oxford scholarship. Um, but one of her uh, main tasks is to get the Duke of Montgomery, the hero, to go on the suffragist side. So she's invited to his estate um, where she stays 
and gets sick. So he is pretty much forced to take care of her there. Lots of good forced proximity there. I just love the story so much. I love the characters. I love the slow burn. I was glued to the pages of this one. I was really surprised by how much I love this. This is the first to a new series that I'm so, so excited for. Um, we already know the main couple for the next book. We get introduced to them in this one and I am so, so excited for it. My next book is an audiobook. This was one of the free um, audio originals on Audible, like you get two a month and this was one of them. Obviously I have to grab the romance when it's there and this one is Lucky Suit by Lauren Blakely. This was honestly an okay read. I don't don't remember much from it. It's only two and a half hours long so really really short. The main characters meet through an online dating app but it's a little suspicious on how they even meet because things don't add up but they do form a connection and it works. This was super cute but not that memorable to be honest. The narrators Andy Arndt and Zachary Weber were definitely the ones pulling this audiobook through for me. Um, I do enjoy Lauren Blakely mainly I only listen to her on audiobooks but this one was just okay for me and I gave it three stars. Although five stars for the narrators. My next one was also another three star read. I really wanted to love it more. So many of my friends on Instagram love it and that is The Winter King by C.L. Wilson. Um, this is a fantasy romance. Um, so many people loved it but I just did not connect with it. Um, the way that I wanted to. It is A Marriage of Convenience by like enemy kingdoms who are trying to form an alliance. So it's the king of the winter kingdom and one of the princesses of the summer kingdom. It is a very reluctant marriage of convenience but they do you know manage to make it uh, work in the end. My main problem with it though was just the pacing. It is so slow in especially the first half of the story not much develops in the romance because these two are apart uh, for a really long time. The story was just so long and dragged out it was hard for me to connect with. Once the romance did pick up I did enjoy it just a little bit more but I never really ended up loving it. Um, but I do enjoy this world. The world building was fantastic. Um, there is another book in the series. I think there's gonna be two or three more books um, for each of the four Princesses of Summer. I do want to read them, but I'm just not in the biggest hurry to. But I am really, really sad that I didn't love this as much as everyone else did. My next read is Love on Lexington Avenue by Lauren Lane. I do not have my copy at this moment because I think I let my cousin borrow it because I can't find it on my shelves. I really enjoyed this one. It was the perfect grumpy hero, um, bubbly heroine kind of romance. He is also um, on my grumpy hero video. But yes, this series is so much fun to read. Very light on the steam, but I don't mind it too much just because Lauren Lane, you know, is not exactly known for her steaminess, but it is full of good chemistry and tension and that was good enough for me. This is book two in the Central Park Pack series. The first one was um, Passion on Park Avenue, which I also really enjoyed. I think I like this one just a little bit more because um, I loved the main characters. Scott and Claire are just so different um, in terms of personality, in terms of what they want in life, but they work so so well. They're so adorable together. Um, he is hired as the contractor for Claire's brownstone that she inherits from her cheating husband. So they have to spend a lot of time together. They like to tease each other a bit. They have some really great uh, banter together. It was just a really good a feel good type of romance with a great cast of characters. I am so so excited for the third book. It's Friends to Lovers. I think Marriage of Convenience too. But if you need something that is just very satisfying and will put a smile on your face, read this one. Next up is a Hades and Persephone retelling and that is Goddess of Spring by PC Cast. I saw this at a used bookstore and had to grab it because Hades and Persephone is one of my favorite um, retellings to read about. If you haven't read Lore Olympus on Webtoon, the app, go read it. It's fantastic. But this one is a good old fantasy romance. The heroine owns a bakery shop that is kind of falling in the red. So she kind of jokingly asks Demeter to help her out. But of course Demeter actually shows up and they make a deal that Lena, the main character, will switch places with Persephone, Demeter's daughter, 
for the next couple months. So she makes this deal and Lena essentially becomes Persephone and has all of her looks and her powers. Demeter sends Lena as Persephone to Hades so that she can bring life back to the underworld. And of course, Hades and Lena fall in love. Even though Hades believes that Lena is Persephone, it's such a sweet read. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's a little cheesy at times, but I didn't mind it. Hades is gorgeous and sexy as all get out. Um, Lena is a really fantastic heroine. She's actually in her 40s, so not a young, naive kind of girl. And the perfect match for Hades to bring him out of his loneliness and his sullenness. So if you're looking for a mythological romance retelling, Hades and Persephone, you should read this one. It's really good. I think this has like a whole series full of um, retellings for all of the gods and goddesses, or at least the main ones that we know. I kind of want to read them all, but there are like at least 10 of them, so there's a lot. I think there is a mermaid one though, that sounds really good, and someone also recommended it to me, so I might read that one next. My next read was You Can Have Manhattan by P. D'Angelico. I was really excited to read this one. This author is new to me. I love reading new to me authors, debut authors, and this one going on my list. I was really excited for this one because the cover is gorgeous, and it is a forced arranged marriage um, and enemies to lovers romance. Romance. So I was expecting a lot of tension and I got it and surprisingly a lot of angst which I was really happy about and some groveling at the end which I will never say no to. Our heroine Sydney is set to become CEO of the company that she works at. She has a really great relationship with the current CEO and his wife. Not so much their son because he was known as like a playboy, party boy, and didn't give a crap about the company. But now that the CEO is dying, he has one last request of Sydney and that is for her to marry his son, Scott. Sydney and Scott do not like each other. Sydney thinks he is a good for nothing party boy that he was like 10 years ago. And Scott thinks she is very stuck up. But he's changed since the 10 years that they first saw each other. He's become a really successful owner of a cattle ranch and doing very well for himself out in like Wyoming or something. Scott does everything he can to make Sydney want to back out of the arranged marriage, which means that he treats her really, really poorly. He is such a jackass. Honestly, I wanted to slap him so many times, but he does eventually redeem himself in the end. I would have liked a little bit more groveling from him, but the angst was still really, really good. I love when the guy realizes that he fucks up big time, so he has to go on um, a groveling spree. It honestly reminds me a lot of Arranged by R.K. Lily, one of my favorites of this year. That one was also an arranged marriage with an awful hero who has a lot to make up for, so if you like that book, you will probably enjoy this one too. My next read, another by Fiona Cole, is a accidental pregnancy romance. I was really, really excited to read this one because I read the blurb and it said that the hero was ready to go all in with the mother of his upcoming child and I love that. I am always ready to read about a hero who wants everything with the heroine and has to pretty much convince her to give him a chance. Karina and Ian get pregnant at their very second meeting, which was when they had their first hookup. Karina is a very take charge kind of woman. I love her so much. Karina is a total boss, especially in the workplace. She puts all of her other co-workers to shame. Her love life though is a little different. She was hurt from her broken engagement, so she she is pretty wary when it comes to Ian. But when Ian finds out that he's about to have a child, he goes all in. He's very committed from the very start. And I love that about him. He was so supportive of Karina. Um, he was charming. He was funny. I adored him. They were so sweet, so perfect together. I love the chemistry. I love the tension. It was a very steamy book. Some good dirty talk. I really need to read Fiona Cole a lot more. There is a tease at the end of another about the next book in this kind of series. Um, like this whole group of friends, each of them gets their own book. But the next book is about Ian best friend's little sister um, and a man who is very much older than her and owns sort of a sex club um, but that one sounds amazing I'm so excited for it I love age gap is there a month that goes by where I don't read Lisa Clayfus? I think for the past four or five-ish months 
I've been reading at least one Lisa Kleypas book <laughs> each month. I'm actually working um, through her backlist and I want to finish it someday, but I'm taking my time. But this month I read Where Dreams Begin. Um, I listened to this one in audio. This one is one of her standalones and it kind of reminded me of Dreaming of You, which I read last month in the whole hero being a self-made man. Um, but this one, the heroine is a single parent. She um, is widowed and has a young daughter. But in order to give her daughter um, a good life, she makes a deal with Zachary, the hero, um, that she will go live with him and teach him how to be a respectful gentleman and he will pay her for it and give her daughter like the dowry that she can't really give her herself. Zachary of course wants more from Holly but being as he's not titled or anything um, makes that a little bit more difficult. Zachary is a little rough around the edges um, but he's a very seductive man. I really enjoyed his character. I love Lisa Kleypas's more rough heroes. Derek Craven, of course, um, and Zachary is one of them. There's just so much fantastic chemistry and tension between these two that they can't help but fall for each other. I really enjoyed this audiobook. The narrator was really great with her British accent. Um, the story was great. It's not like a new favorite of mine um, from her books, but still a solid historical romance read. If you love Lisa Kleypas, if you love Dreaming of You, definitely give this one a try. This next one was one of my most anticipated reads of the month, and that is Promise of Darkness by Beck McMaster. This is my first book from this author. I'm so excited that I finally got to read her books. She's been on my TBR for years since I got into steampunk like in 2012. This one is not steampunk though. Um, it is a fantasy romance all about the Fae. This is a start to a new series. Sadly the couple story is not finished and will continue on but Promise of Darkness was fantastic. I loved it so much. It is loosely like very very loosely based off of Hades and Persephone. That was mainly the reason why I wanted to read it. It just uses um, the whole the heroine living in the hero's land for a couple months out of the year every year. It reminded me a lot of A Court of Thorns and Roses. So like I said it's about the Fae, the Seelie, and the Unseelie. Um, the hero is one of the princes of the Unseelie kingdoms, Thiago, and the heroine is a princess from one of the Seelie courts. So kind of a Romeo and Juliet thing. They are enemies. They're supposed to be enemies. There's a lot of action, um, a mysterious curse that binds the heroine. There's a mysterious aspect to their romance too, um, which was a little predictable, but I didn't really care at all about the predictableness. Um, I still loved it. I loved how alpha and intense our dark prince hero is. So if you love anything Fae related like Court of Thorns and Roses series or even the Fever series, um, definitely give this one a try. I am so looking forward to the rest of the series. It's not really a cliffhanger ending but it is an open-ended ending and there is so much more to be discovered from this fairy world and I want more from the romance, more from the main characters. I just really enjoy this one. I am really glad that I finally got to read a Bic McMaster book. She has a really big back backlist that I really need to, she has a huge backlist that I really need to get started on, especially her steampunk series, so I'm really excited for that. These next two are novellas by Ella Good. The first one is Sweet Kisses, the second one is Saved Kisses. These are book two and three in the Kisses series. I do like the series, but it's not really anything to write home about. To be honest, I like Ella Good's earlier books, earlier novellas, like especially her MC ones. Those were fantastic and smutty. But these recent ones are all kind of starting to sound the same. I mean, they give me exactly what I'm looking for, which is, you know, an alpha hero who is totally obsessed with the heroine. They're really quick, um, fast reads, and I like reading these in between, you know, regular full-length books when I just get to read these and turn off my brain. These Kisses books are short and fun, um, but they're not really all that memorable. I do prefer her MC books. I really love the one where she wrote about two brothers and the girl next door. That one was like a college-y smutty novella. This next one is by one of my beloved um, authors from my childhood, and that is Mike Cabot's No Judgments. This one sadly was 
pretty disappointing read. Um, one of my least favorites from the month. Uh, the romance was just not good. It wasn't developed enough. The main characters were really, really dumb and made stupid decisions. So they live in a small island in the Florida Keys and there is a category five hurricane coming towards them. And first off, the heroine chooses not to evacuate against everyone's recommendations too. She makes poor decisions like going out into the pouring windy rain just to like save some animals or just to avoid being around the guy, the hero who makes her hot. These characters, the heroine and the hero, just did not make the best of decisions when it comes to, you know, staying safe during a category five hurricane. The romance itself didn't have any good development at all. I didn't care for it. I didn't care for the characters. And I was really bored when the book would get really into all the whole hurricane stuff, describing all the debris, what happens during a hurricane, what happens after was boring me to tears and it was a big chunk of the book too. So yeah, I'm really sad that I could enjoy this one more. I love McCabot. She was like my childhood. I read all of her books growing up, but romance, um, especially the ones that actual romance readers read is probably not for her. Like I think if I read this as a teen when I was reading all of her other books, I would probably enjoy it. But as an actual romance reader today, this just did not work for me. This next book is called Forget Me Not by QB Tyler. This is another new to me author, um, but I was intrigued by this one when someone asked me about it on Instagram. Like they forgot the title of the book, but they described it to me. Eventually they remembered the title and it was this book. But this one is a cheating romance and obviously not for everyone. Um, it's a second chance romance between a married but separated couple. The reason for the separation is of course the hero cheating, um, but he gets into an accident that causes him to have amnesia and forget that he ever cheated on the heroine, that they were ever separated and ready to get divorced. This one was really angsty, a lot of groveling, which was the main reason why I wanted to give it a try. Lots of pain and heartbreak on the heroine's part. I never really actually ended up forgiving the hero for what he did because honestly he kept um, sleeping with that woman that he cheated on the heroine with. So I was like, um, okay, no. <laughs> but still overall, it wasn't bad. Um, I definitely want to read more of this author. Someone recommended to me Unconditional and that one's like an age gap forbidden romance. So I kind of want to read that one. My next book was one of my contemporary a books. No Judgments was also one of my contemporary a books. And this one is Wrapped Up In You by Jill Shalvis. I adore this one so much. I really enjoyed the books that I've read from the Heartbreaker Bay series. I've only read like two others, um, but I wanna read them all someday. I love this cast of characters, I love the setting, and I really enjoyed this book. It's got all the Christmas feels, which made me so happy because I'm so ready for the holidays. Um, the heroine is a taco truck owner in San Francisco, and the hero is a sheriff and ranch owner from Idaho who's on vacation in San Francisco. They meet through their mutual friend group and have some really great chemistry between them. Ivy has had quite the heartbreaking childhood growing up, so she's pretty much self-made herself into the successful taco truck owner that she is today, and she's ready to like start a new good life for herself. But then of course, things from her past um, catch up with her. Kel is such a sweet hero. I love him so much. He was so swoony, so patient, um, and understanding when it come, when it came to Ivy. He has some hangups himself when it comes to love, um, after catching his mom cheating on his dad. Um, but once he realizes that he wants all in with Ivy, he goes all in. It was just such a sweet romance. I really enjoyed it. I loved this big cast of friends. Um, the girl group, especially uh, them welcoming Ivy into their group, showing her so much love and support that she never had growing up. It was so feel good, so sexy. If you love holiday romances, definitely read this one. This next one is also another new to me author. Um, it's a historical romance and that is When the Marquess Was Mine by Carolyn Linden. This one has the whole amnesia trope which was mainly the reason why I wanted to read it. The hero has amnesia and forgets that he won like the deed to the heroine's friend's estate. The heroine ends up pretending that she's his fiance and is really surprised when he wakes up and is not the same cruel um, Marquess that he was 
prior to the accident that caused the amnesia. He was a pretty awful guy before that, like treating others poorly, looking down on them. But he has had a whole personality change because of the amnesia and is a really sweet and charming guy now. Rob, our hero, ends up falling for Georgiana, um, but of course she is still lying to him. This book was okay. Like I liked it, but I didn't love it. Um, I loved Rob, the hero, but everything outside of the romance was kind of a drag and the book never really addressed the whole personality change, even, you know, after he regains his memories. I do want to read Carolyn Linden's other books. Um, like this book hasn't turned me off of all her other books, but I do wish that I could have loved this a little bit more. This next book was for our Ravished by Romance book club read, and that is The First Girl Child by Amy Harmon. If you missed the live chat, you can go check it out on Jessica Peaceful Books channel. I'll leave a link to it in the description below and follow our book club Instagram too. I'll leave that um, link too. But I like this one. It wasn't as romancy as I would have liked it, but I did enjoy it. It was very different, like it pulled from mythology, from religion in this really interesting way. It's a fantasy, it's got a little bit of romance, it's about these kingdoms who are cursed. Um, they can't give birth to girls, they're all just boys. And of course when the first girl child is born, she's seen as kind of a savior. There's like an evil king. It's kind of hard to describe honestly, it's just very different from any of the fantasies that I've read but I liked it, I enjoyed it. Just don't expect too much romance in this one, but otherwise it's a solid fantasy read. This next one is a novella in this fantasy romance series that was recommended during the book club live chat, and that is Faze Captive by Lily Archer. I really enjoy this one. I wanted to read it because it was all about the Fae, a Fae king, and like faded mates. I'm a sucker for faded mates, um, and this one just totally worked for me. The main couple for Faze Captive, they have four books four novellas in this series, so it's like a continuing story for them. But I read the first one, I read the second one in October though, so I'm not counting it just yet. But I really enjoy this one, I like a fake king who is obsessed with his mate. Yes, the heroine who is from the human world, she is transported to the fae world and ends up being mated to a fae king. The romance itself doesn't develop too much in this novella. Um, like you see the potential, but nothing really happens all that much, but I still loved it. I kind of saw it as like part one of four of their stories, so I didn't mind too much that they didn't, you know, just go straight into the romance. There's some really good world building. Um, I really like it and I'm definitely going to continue on with their story. This next one is one of my absolute favorites of September, and that is Look the Part by Julie E. Ann. I love this one so much. This book and this author have been recommended to me so many times, and I'm so glad that I finally read it. Um, it was so good, it was so heartbreaking, but at the same time, really, really funny. Like, these characters made me laugh out loud. It's a single parent romance. The hero is widowed. He actually caused his wife to die in a drunk driving accident, so he has a lot of, you know, shame and guilt from that. His son has autism, and I just loved him. I loved both of them, honestly. I wasn't expecting to love Flint so much just because, you know, drunk driving accident, but he grew on me. Um, he is very much the epitome of a grumpy hero. All he wants to do is provide the best life for his son, and the heroine entering his life is not a factor in that, but he can't help but end up falling for Ellen, the heroine, who is a music therapist. She is so fun, so bubbly, um, doesn't take any of his shit. She actually rents one of his apartments, the one that's above his office, and her being a music therapist, there's music playing, right? So Flint did not expect that for some dumb reason. And now that he hears all this rucket, he wants to kick her out. And she's like, nope, not happening. This one was just so much fun to read. It's emotional, but these characters are so adorable. And I fell in love with these characters so easily. It's a great opposite the tract romance. And I just loved it so much. Definitely one of my favorites of the whole year. Um, that's how much I loved it. And honestly, I'm kicking myself 
for not reading this author sooner. I'm definitely going to read a lot more of her books. My last release is a book that has been on my currently reading shelf on Goodreads since 2016, and that is Dirty by Kylie Scott. I read about half of it back in 2016, but I ended up finishing it in audio in September. This is the first book, a standalone in the Dive Bar series, which is kind of related to the Stage Dive series. Like some characters from Stage Dive do show up in Dirty, which was so much fun. But I like this one. I gave it three stars. Like it wasn't amazing but I did like it. I love the heroine but I just had a problem with the hero so that was why I didn't love it fully. For some reason Kylie Scott's more recent books the or at least the more recent books that I've read from her I have not been liking the heroes all that much. Um, they got on my nerves. In this one in Dirty the hero couldn't stop looking at the heroine's boobs and I got pretty tired of it pretty quickly. So Vaughn was okay. He was nothing really special, but I did love the heroine, Lydia. Their first scene together is Lydia getting caught in Vaughn's bathtub um, after running away from her wedding. She is sent like a video of her fiance cheating on her with um, his best man. So of course she calls off the wedding and runs away. She ends up finding a new life, new friends, and a new love, and I was really, really happy for her. But I just didn't love Vaughn as much as I wanted to. I still love her stage dive series, at least the first three books. Um, if you haven't read those, go check them out. They are so much fun. I'm not sure I'll continue with this series. Honestly, none of the supporting characters really interested me, except for like a backstory between um, this uh, formerly married couple who still love each other. But other than that, um, the other two books in the series don't interest me that much, so I probably won't end up reading them. So that was all the books that I read in September 2019. It was quite a lot, so this video is a little long. Again, let me know what some of your favorites from September were. If you read any of the same books that I also read, um, if you love them or not, let me know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this wrap up and I'll see you all next time. Bye.